Welcome back to Let's Play Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Wind. Notorious B.I.G. has been defeated. Ish. Supposedly. Trish becomes fairly certain she's, de she's defeated the stand. And Bouchardi comes out. And Trish heralds her victory. Yeah, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about the stand anymore. I defeated it. And tells her, tells him about the brooch. And Bouchardi yells at her to come closer and slowly come to them right now. Because yeah, I, I really wish she was dead. Yeah. Why? What's What's wrong? Impossible. And behind her. We should note that one thing that Notorious B.I.G. does that it uh it eats stuff. Yeah, it doesn't really have a solid body. It just so, encompasses other things and grows larger. The more it kind of eats, the bigger it gets. And right now it's pretty much kind of heating up the airplane. Yeah. Which is the reason Bouchardi came out and told them that they were losing altitude. Which is honestly their fault for bringing Jorn on an airplane in the first place. Really, you don't bring a Joe Star onto an airplane. Because what? Joseph alone hit like four plane crashes. Yeah. One when he was a kid. One when he drove an airplane into cars in a <laughs> volcano. Yeah. One with Grey Tow Tower of Grey. That one in the desert. Yeah, the one in the desert. Got attacked on a submarine. A freaking submarine. You don't get attacked on a submarine. Jotaro went through most of those since he was in Series 3 as well. Really, every airplane a Joestar has ever been on has crashed. You yeah. don't bring a Joestar onto an airplane. Now, the strategy here is to basically knock him back the whole time. There's two different ways you can do it. You can just do a stand shoot, or you can charge up the stand itself and knock it back. But if you do that, you kind of break your stand. And he attacks you with his fists. If you could call them fists. They're kind of fists. Cushion fists. Cushion fists. Chair fists. Yeah, the idea here, though, is the plane is crashing. There's not really all that much they can do about it. So you're buying time to make sure Notorious B.I.G. doesn't essentially eat the airplane before they're all safe. So all you have to do is survive for two minutes. But he does slowly encroach up the plane if you, if you don't... Oh! If you don't basically stop him, he gets closer and closer and closer. That's why you go back and smack him. You can really only do it three times until he smacks at you like that. Yeah. I'd show you a fourth time, but I ain't stupid. Yeah, and you see, he is actually still slowly gaining ground. There's not much you can do about it. You just have to live out and endure the two minutes. And luggage just constantly falling, which is strange because there wasn't that much luggage on the plane in the first place. Yeah, it was an it was an empty airplane. I mean, I can understand like the life preservers and some of the other things that seem to be falling, but luggage. I don't remember monsters bringing that much luggage. Yeah, it's just them. It's an empty airplane. They're even using Moody Blues to fly the stupid thing. Nice ending, by the way. I, I just wanted to do the wannabe thing one more time. <laughs> To be continued as Trish flies backwards. And again, for spacing purposes, we don't... We're going to have to cut this video a little short, so we're putting in this next cutscene and calling it a video. Sadly, this video is only going to be like five, six minutes long. You said move. Now, since they've fended off the Taurus B.I.G., they still have no clue what they're going to do, because the damn thing is going to keep coming. And now Trish has an idea, which most stand users end up having. Do you ever notice that most stand users are somehow smart, even if they're dumb? Yeah, they're really good at strategy involving their own stands. Yeah, she's turned the door rubbery. I hate to say rubbery, because there was some more scientific stuff. Yeah. 
for lack of a better term, yeah, rubber. So she's turned the door rubber and buying them a little time. Yeah, she basically turns the cabinet they're in into rubber, and they basically break the plane into half and say, wait, bye bye to Notorious B.I.G. Who falls into the ocean? I think a little bit, bit of him attacks them again, but that gets knocked away as yeah. well. It oh. like, never stops, it's like constantly trying to kill stuff. Yeah, it's Notorious B.I.G. actually falls into the ocean after this whole mess is done, where he just kind of lives out as days at the bottom of the ocean, causing trouble for passing boats. Which, how can a stand technically live out its days? Yeah. Can a stand by itself technically die, since a stand is connected to its user? Although Notorious I B.I.G. is supposed can. to be different. I think it can, but I don't know about that one. Mm. Oh, and since we have a little bit of time here, I might as well say, a note on these, um, intelligence of stand users. As we've said before, a stand is the physical manifestation of your spiritual energy. There, so in the end, the stand is you. Its ability reflects your own mind. So it goes to reason that whatever stand ability someone ends up with is something they're inherently very good at. So it kind of goes to show that's why they're good at strategy and such with their own stand. Bushiardi was good at making zippers on the ground with his own hands? Don't question me. I just did. <laughs> Until next time, everyone.